Researchers tracing human development have known for decades that early forms of man used stone tools to hunt their prey, but an archaeological team led by scientists from the University of Victoria say they have found the oldest evidence of how humans subsisted in a very demanding region of the world thousands of years before Homo sapiens first evolved in Africa. University of Victoria paleoanthropologist April Knoll led the team in the Middle Eastern nation of Jordan where this discovery was made. Professor Knoll, it's so good to see you. This new understanding of how early man may have lived comes down to your team's discovery of a certain protein residue. That's right. Um, we've been able to identify specific uh, proteins on the working edges of our stone tools. So where does this protein residue fit with what scientists have already known about early forms of human life? Well, if you think about it, a lot of archaeological sites have stone tools and and as bones with them, associated with them, or they have cut marks on these bones. But our work is actually the first, or the oldest, uh, that's been able to really identify uh, what they've been used for, these stone tools have been used for specifically. Uh, and so we've been able to identify uh, residue from horses, from wild cattle, from duck, from rhino, and, and so on. So it's been really uh, exciting for us. So this gives you a sense of what Paleo Man was, was in fact, eating back uh, so many years ago. Describe the environment where these early forms of humans lived would have been like. Uh, well, it's a very arid environment. In fact, at times it may have been even more arid than today. And our site is actually on the location of a former paleo marsh, so it actually acted uh, as an oasis in the desert. So in a sense, you can think of it an, as an analogy, sort of an African watering hole. So it would have been a place that attracted, that would have supported animal life and uh, plants and, I mean, sorry, animal life, plants, and uh, early humans as well. So they would have been attracted to, uh, to that one water source uh, in the region. We're showing viewers right now uh, examples, pictures of, of the dig that went on in Jordan. Mm -hmm. What was the most exciting moment for you, do you recall? Well, I think um, actually it turned out to be our exciting moment in, in relation to this study was really it took place in the lab. When you think about it, a lot of the work that we do in Jordan is very slow, meticulous work. It's what you think of on an archaeological site where people have trowels and dental picks and so on. And it wasn't until we came back to our lab in the University of Victoria where my colleague Daniel Stuber and I were talking about the stone tools. We were analyzing them. And he said, you know, maybe we should look for residue on these and um and they're so much older than the next example of uh, identifiable residue on stone tools. And so we thought, oh, you know, I'm not sure this is going to work. And we, uh, and, but we did. We sent a sample out after looking at these stone tools under a microscope and, and saying, OK, these ones we know have been used a lot. Let's look for residue on them. And then uh, one of them came back positive out of our small sample for horse. And we were unbelievably excited. <laughs> so it's been a long, uh, long progress, a long uh, process, excuse me, uh, yeah. of all of us working together for about two years. Professor, yeah. I've only unfortunately got a few seconds left, but how might this new knowledge be used in the future as we try to understand where we came from as a species? That's a great question. Well, I think um, as modern humans uh, living in a challenging environment, we would eat anything and everything we could, right? That makes sense. Uh -huh. uh, but what we see is that ability to really exploit a wide variety of species um, requires a lot of cognitive development and social development and technological development. And so what this is helping us to understand is when our earliest ancestors were able to do that. And what we're seeing here is maybe it's a little bit earlier than we used to. To think and so hopefully our colleagues who have sites as old or older than ours will also start looking for residue and will put all of these pieces of the puzzle together. Want to note to viewer, uh, viewers, Professor Noel's paper will appear in the September issue of the Journal of Archaeological Science. University of Victoria paleoanthropologist April Noel, such a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. Thank you so much.